Hebrews explained God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they verses 1 through 4 chapter 1 Hebrews Hebrews explained is very simple we just want to explain it you can argue about who wrote Hebrews maybe but you really can't prove that Paul didn't because he did <laughs> so if you have a problem with it talk to God God is how Hebrew starts much like in the beginning God when we look at Genesis God spoke in several different ways according to verse 1 so let's just look at verse 1 only let's just explain verse 1 only let's talk about it to make sure that we kind of have a handle on what's being said so we don't try to change it or rearrange it God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets so in the past God spoke at different times sundry times simply means a variety of times different ways means and in diverse manners describes all the different avenues with which God could speak so what is Paul saying he's saying well Balaam did have God speak to him by a mule. God did speak through a mule to Balaam to tell that prophet of God, and he was a prophet of God. He's going the wrong way. God chose to speak in a variety of ways. He didn't just write on the wall, like with Daniel, or with the king and his court in Daniel's time by putting the words up there that Daniel read to him and explained what the meaning thereof was many many tekaufum but God chose in those days to speak through a man and in the way that most Jewish sages of the time that this was written were aware of God chose men to speak through so speaking to a priesthood that was based upon a man delegating to other priests what the Word of God said and reading it as the authority for God then Paul knew who he was speaking to he was saying look in times past this is the way it was but he's not going to leave it at the way it is because you see today we have something similar to that there are times where people will come up to you and say hey I'm a prophet of God and I have a word for you there are times where pastors will come up and say to you I am a pastor you do what I say there are times where there are going to be men and women come up to you and say God give me a word for you brother there are times where people will say to you all manner of diverse ways that God has spoken in the past to people but God in diverse manners spoken times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son interesting isn't it so we agree in explanation that there are times where God has spoken in the past through his prophets there are times in the past where God has spoken through mules through the priesthood through religious leaders through religion through demonstration of his power through many variety of ways as a matter of fact if you look through the entire Old Testament which is what Paul is saying to do 
you can see different ways and means that God kept trying to communicate and kept communicating to his people through his prophets. And a prophet was simply someone who spoke what God said. That's simple. Modern days, there are lots of times where people, whether it be a pastor, a teacher, an elder, a deacon, a, a good friend, a neighbor, a relative, will speak and sometimes get carried away with emotion because their devotion to God is such that they feel like they have this overwhelming desire to tell you something or to make you to hear something that God says, hey look, in the past that would have been good, but in the present it says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. So verse 1 reminds us that, yeah, there was a time and a place where it was good, where maybe we didn't listen so well, and we needed to hear from the prophets and to be told these things. But in these last days, Paul is reminding us, he's spoken to us by his son. God has spoken to us by his son. Whenever you run into a conflict of anything you understand in scripture, or anything that you see in the Word of God and then you have someone come up and try to explain it to you and it contradicts what God is telling you don't listen bluntly because God has spoken to you in these latter days through his son Jesus does speak to you Jesus said bluntly my sheep hear my voice and they know me they will not follow the voice of another but they know my voice and they will follow me we're told that we were given the Holy Spirit so that we would have no need that any man teach you, but the Spirit of God who dwells within you, He would lead you into all truth and He would remind you of those things that Jesus has taught. There was never a time where the Holy Spirit was given for people to go off on a tangent and come up with some word of God on their own. Never. That is false. Always the Holy Spirit was given to remind you, to instill in you, to give you a word from Jesus, not from, quote, exhortation from the Word of God or some explanation that they apply their own meaning to. For if they do, then that prophet is speaking out of turn. And that prophet is only speaking from a previous, according to Hebrews, times past and diverse manners. Now while it may be good to have prophets, and it is good to have a word from God spoken to them for us, Paul makes that distinction that it had better be from the Lord Jesus. For if they are speaking in any other manner, then it's not from Jesus, is it? Because it says that hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. The greater example is being made right here in verse 1, right off the bat in part of verse 2, is it was previously the prophets who held the word of God for us. Now we have access by way of Jesus to himself. Jesus is the one who gives us the word. The reason being is he is called the word. So in explanation of how God used to speak, we understand how he did do it in the past. But why would we go to the past to understand the present when we have Jesus who could tell us what to say, what to do, what to speak, what to understand, what to hear? Because he gave us his Holy Spirit, God wants to direct us to have a personal directive relationship, not a circumvential one where we go around what God is saying and hear from someone else to hear from God but we are told to go directly to God to hear from God. Now, by way of explanation, I would say that makes perfect sense. Why should you listen to me when you can ask God direct? Why should you not have the same understanding I have if you can have the same spirit I have, the Holy Spirit? Why should you not know the same things that Paul knows if you can have the same God that Paul has? You see, there is no real reason for a definite division between the body of Christ for any reason whatsoever because love should have brought us together. 
but by way of listening to other voices, to others, rather than hearing what God is saying in verse 2, the first part, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, then we have taken certain teachings by men and made doctrines and dogmas and ideas out of the dissertation that Paul is giving to explain to the Jew as well as to the Gentile what God has done in these latter days what God has done in these days you and I live in we are the latter days whether you know it or not and whether you accept it or not is irrelevant to the fact that Israel became a nation and when it did when the children of Israel came back into the land when the world and the nations of the world decided to give back the land that they had begun to take back and to purchase as early as the 1800s now maybe people don't realize that but you know back in the 1800s Theodore Herschel decided to go according to his inspiration Zionism was born and to start a nation called Israel and that nation and they set up almost everything that's in the nation back in the 1800s. And 120 years later, in 1967, Jerusalem became the capital of that nation that Theodore Herschel saw as a visionary in the future. Is he a prophet? Good question. It came to pass everything he said, exactly as he said. So the question would be, when did Israel become a nation? When it did, the latter days began and of those latter days we are in the latter generation we are in those last days spoken unto us by his son we will see the return of Jesus Hebrews is a wonderful explanation to the Jew of why and how God works in us to us and through us as we go through this explanation of Hebrews always recognize that each little part each little statement holds a volume of knowledge for you understand it in context and it will spare you from being caught up into teachings of men words from other gods words from possibly people who are needing something else than what God has in store for you and allows you to understand that you yourself by yourself really can understand the Word of God you're supposed to take the Word of God as you are hearing it as you are studying it and applying it to your life with you into church and involve your church family together as you all grow up together now when a pastor gets up in front of a church and shares and teaches he's encouraging you with what he studied he's not teaching you really he's encouraging you and exhorting you and promoting you to go and study on your own because the bottom line is you are always told by the Lord Jesus himself to follow him you were never told to follow another man to be followers of someone else in order to find Jesus no you were meant to find in these latter days that God, who in times past spoke in sundry times and ways and manners and means by a variety of ways, that in these last days He has spoken unto us. The Word of God is true. The Bible is a fact. Hebrews is established as God's Word to you today. In God's Word today for you. You need to realize, very bluntly, these last days Jesus has spoken to you Jesus is speaking to you. Jesus wants you to hear his voice. Jesus is saying, if you are deceived, then it's self-deception. For he has spoken in these latter days that he does not need the prophets, nor does he need a teacher or a pastor, an elder, a deacon, or anybody else to speak for him. Though those are beneficial at times to steer you in the right direction, the number one priority for you is to walk, to talk, to hear and to know the Lord Jesus Christ himself. There is no other explanation for you to go off on a tangent and to be misled or to be misunderstanding what Hebrews is saying. There is no reason for you to be 
miscommunicative to God himself when God has given you his word explained simply, openly, and providing for you Hebrews that you might understand how to walk, how to talk, how to listen, and how to be with Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, part of 2, explained. Father, I thank you that you've given us your word, your will, and your way. For without a God, we would go separately on our own instincts and our own ideas of what you would say and what you would do. But because you've given us your word, because you've explained to us how you spoke in the past through your prophets, and how you have told us that there is a better way that in these latter days you have spoken to us through your Son, then God, I thank you that you have given us ears to hear and eyes to see the Spirit of God as he works in us, as he develops us into being receptive to what you would say to us directly. For each individual person, God, I pray that they would be by themselves, with themselves, and with you alone at some point in time to hear what you would say, to hear what you would have for them to know, what you would speak in the stillness of their own heart, your word, your will, and your way for them to understand what it is today that they can have from you as spoken directly by you to them in Jesus' name. For there is no other name whereby a man may be saved except in your name, O Lord. And so, Most High God, I thank you that you are our teacher, that you're our guide, and that you're our leader. God bless you. God keep you. God, I pray, cause even the heavens to open up and His face to shine upon you in a greater way than you've ever known before, that the revelation of His Son would be made manifest in your heart as you seek to know Him in a more personal and intimate way each and every day of your life that you live. For such is what God would desire for you to know, that as He explains to you where you've come from, He wants to show you where you get to go. Thank you.